What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do a MSD JB4 backend flash thing, man. So I've been running the JB4 standalone for a week, but more than a week. And I decided today we're gonna do the backend flash. I was gonna wait with the backend flash till the single turbo is fitted, but they're taking extra long. I think it's, they said they laser cut the things wrong or something and now it's taking longer to build the manifold. So the turbo can only go, and go start, the fitment can only start in a week and a half from now. So I just decided to screw it. I'm going to still have fun with the car. I'm not just going to wait for the single. So I'm going to do the twin turbo back in flash for now. And then as soon as the single is on, we'll do it again. Let's see if the JB4 with the MSD back in flash is faster than MSD stage 2+. plus. No. Okay, so we're going to start the back in flash now. I'll somewhat walk you through it. If, if you want to know how to do the back in flash, you're going to learn today as well. Okay, cool. Let's start. So what you'll need... Is the OTG cable a device with MHD and the back end flash maps on? So you have to download it from N54 Tech. I'll leave a link in the description. Just click on the latest link because I think there's three links. The top one is the newest one, so it's got the, the newest software. Okay, so click on the newest one, then download it, and then you just have to unpack it because it's a zip file. And then you download it onto the device and you find it in your MHD. And then, yeah. See, now I'm on map five, so you just go to map. Zero. Okay, then we go out. Bloop. Then what we need to do is plug in the OTG cable. OBD cable, I mean. It's here at the bottom. Easy game. We need to put the OTG adapter on. Check that shit. Professional camera work, yeah? One-handed USB insertion, like a boss. And then all you need to do is go into MHD. Okay, and when you're in MHD, just go to the back in flash option. There, boop. You'll see there's my JB4 N54 BEF, blah, 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 blah. That's the one you look looking for. Then there, you have to look on the link I'm going to put in the description as well. It's going to tell you which one of these works for your car so it depends on the year the different cars like the 1m uses a specific one and the 335 is uses another one and then the older ones use another one you know what i mean so i use that one and then the single turbo maps is for if you've got a single turbo which i don't so i need a pump gas this one here that's the one for me so i'm going to install that one and then i'll get back to you okay okay so i did a log on the JB4 before and after we did the MHD with the JB4 because I just wanted to see how big of a difference the MHD actually makes. Now I know they say you can maybe get like one or two PSI extra when you go from just a standalone JB4 to a JB4 with the MHD back in flash. So while I was driving the shit out of the car that you'll see here now. Guys, T's and C's stuff. Hey, um, so we've got the MHD day before back in flash 30 and we're gonna just do a few pulls and logs nothing happened mother nothing happened okay, this is second gear very low rpm flat yes okay, that, there, there she went there she went proper okay we're gonna use those logs Cool, so I'll check you now. I captured a few logs just to see because I was gonna test the car anyways. So why not just get a bit of actual data as well? Okay, so we'll go through the logs. I'm not gonna do super in depth looking at the freaking ignition timing and everything. I just wanna see the boost and the RPM and compare the two and see what's the most, what's like the average, and then we can see how big of a difference the MHD actually makes to the JB4. Cool, let's start. Okay. So if you look at this one, the orange is our boost and the blue is our RPM. So you see how it shifts just before seven, like that's what, six, eight, six, seven. You see that's around six, 6,800 by shift. And then the boost pressure is this blue of this orange line. Okay, so if you look at this peak here, it's 14.4 PSI, 12.4, 16.8. So that's quite a high one for no MHD. This one is 15 and here's our peak of 17 and a half psi so you can clearly see that's the peak 
and I was probably in, I don't have the throttle on. We'll put the throttle on now. Um, okay, so here's the throttle. So you can see I was properly on throttle when we hit the peak. So it was like full throttle through, and the boost came up, tapped down, and went to the peak there. I had what? How many RPM was that around? That's quite high in the RPM range, actually. Um, let me just delete the throttle again. Delete it. So you see the peak was around 17 and a half PSI. And then if you go to the after, now let's see how it looks after the MSD. So again, same story. The orange is our boost, and the blue is our RPM. Now if we just check the like the averages, 10, that's probably also around 10, that is 16.9. Now the base on the previous one was what 17 and a half. So we are already at 16.9. Um, this is probably also around 17.1, 16.7. Now the other one was more like around 13, 14, and then we've got the peak of 17. Yeah, like most of them is all around 17. Um, and then here we've got 19.7, which is basically, remember I still have the stock 20 PSI T-Map sensor in the car. So that's about as much as you're going to get out of this car. That's that's where it's going to like read still, not going to read much higher. Then we've got here yeah, 7, but that's, you can see it's low. Now if we go here, yeah, we've got a 12.9 and a 13.5. So the peak was 90.7 and 90.5. So both of them are very freaking close to 20 PSI. So there is definitely a difference between the two. If you look at this one and you look at this one, we see that. So that's the peaks here. I'm going to put the throttle back. Then we can kind of see. Okay, so that's almost full throttle for a straight amount of time. It went up, shift gear went up. And the same thing happened with the boost. It went up. I'd like to see how much is the throttle to 15.8 bar. I shift it and it went up to a peak of 15.9 and it went down again. So it tapered down there and I kept the throttle open. So that was the boost going down as the RPM went up. And I know it does taper, the tiny turbo tapers down. So that's sharp, that's how it should be. In other words, that's around 16 psi that the car would run on a good one there's no weird peakiness that's an actual like usable thing it went all the way to 6700 rpm so here we can see we'll start here at the bottom the boost was at 9 psi it went down went up 12 and then it went all the way to peak here is 17.5 again so that's a 16.5 and a 17 so that you can see the averages now have went to where the previous ones peaks are that's the average now and now the peak is 2 psi higher than that so they're not wrong when they say you're gonna get a good 2 psi extra just from adding the jb4 flash and it sounds weird but you feel it you can actually feel the car feeling faster and it felt a bit smoother as well um it didn't feel like the taper was as aggressive as it was before it felt like it didn't necessarily go stronger, but it felt like it kept its power. Where before it felt more like it had a drop off. So it felt like bop and then dropping off. Now it feels like it goes and it stays flat. Okay, well, I hope this video was sort of helpful. Um, and not just me rambling on for minutes and minutes and hours and hours about stupid shit. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more car and bike content. Um, we're going to do the single turbo soon. I know I say it a lot, but I can't wait. I'm really itching to install it. And hopefully this JB4 MSD flash video was cool. I enjoyed making it, so I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Check in the next one. Cheers, I. Damn, BT. Damn.